or would be a lucrative source of council revenue if sites were rented to showmen. And so it proved. By the 1920s, the entrepreneurial Phillips brothers from Seattle had re-erected their successful Palais de Dance on a key site in this precinct to make room next door for their new Palais Cinema. The ballroom continued to do well in its new location, despite the protests of churchmen and councillors about the temptations of the tango and corruption of public morals. The revamped Palais Picture Theatre was also lost to fire in 1926. But in its stead rose a new theatre of the grander scale, able to seat 3,000 people and still operating three quarters of a century later, one of Melbourne's few surviving examples of the Great Picture Palace era. In its heyday, the Palais was much more than a cinema. It was a showplace of Melbourne's finest performers. Entertainment was provided by the Palais' own orchestra, led by resident musical director Harry Jacobs, who had also filmed his hand-picked musicians hamming it up for his camera. On the upper esplanade, Another popular dance venue was the Wattle Path Palais de Dance, which opened in 1923 and attracted more than its share of well-heeled patrons. But by the late 1930s, the dance halls were struggling. Their cycle appeared to be over. And Harry Kleiner, who managed the Wattle Path venue, took a punt in having it converted into a skating rink, a starry palace of ice called St. Moritz. Harry Jacobs' daughter, Wendy Lee, was employed by Kleiner to produce ice shows there in the following years. Kleiner's gamble seemed worthwhile. Melbourne had only one other skating rink at the time, the glassy area, and after refitting, St. Moritz could accommodate more than 2,000 people and had more than 20,000 square feet of ice made by a refrigeration plant with four huge compressors. The Wattle Path venue had earlier been fitted out, for a brief period only, as a film studio in December 1933 by flamboyant entrepreneur F.W. Thring. Ladies and gentlemen. In the event, Thring completed only one full feature at Wattle Path. To produce talking pictures in Australia. Although the studio was also hired by director Charles Chevelle, to film the interior scenes of his ambitious feature, Heritage. And the cameramen are watching their cameras. And they're just as worried about their job as you are about yours. I see. There's only one thing there that I want you to remember. And that is that only you and the performer that you're acting with counts. Now, Peggy, this time I want tears. And I don't want to resort to any of the old tricks to get them. I want real tears. If St Kilda didn't quite deliver on its promise to become an antipodean Hollywood, it has over the years maintained solid links with the arts and filmmaking fraternity. The St Kilda Film Festival, from modest beginnings in 1984, has gone from strength to strength and become an important date on the annual Melbourne film events calendar. The first of several filmed versions of the story of the Kelly Gang had also been partly shot in St Kilda at the rear of the chemical works of Millard Johnson and William Gibson. 
And among the early 20th century amusements along the foreshore, St Kilda boasted an open-air cinema, one of the first permanent screening venues to cater for the growing public fascination with motion pictures. But the whole foreshore entertainment enterprise really came of age with the opening of Luna Park, the newest, greatest and best amusement park in the world on Friday the 13th of December 1912. Earlier amusement ventures on this site had failed, but this was something else altogether. Tucked between two lofty Moorish towers and under a huge electric sign sat Mr Moon, toothy mouth agape to allow the fun seekers to enter. Canadian entrepreneur J.D. Williams, who had film interests in Australia, as well as part ownership of Luna Park itself, filmed the opening, or rather the pre-opening, since Williams had no facility to film successfully at night at this time. He could, however, show some of the original park attractions in action. The American Bowl Slide, only the third of its kind in the world. The giant Ferris wheel, a steal at threepence per ride. Some of the opening night performers were also shown in rehearsal. Luina and Franz perfecting their thrilling daredevil act called Slide for Life. In the background is the Palais de Folie, the precursor of the Giggle Palace.